the derivative of the logarithmic function. Um, we're going to prove this and also in this exercise we're going to do some um, just basic derivatives of log functions and then I'm going to go back and do some as well with ln and a max min problem and points of inflection of a, of a natural log. Okay, so let's look at the proof. So the rule is that if y is equal to log base bx, y prime is 1 <coughs> over x ln b. So let's prove that. So if we have y is equal to log base bx, and I wrote this in exponential form, you'd say b to the y equals x, right? b to the y is equal to x. And now if I use implicit differentiation to find the derivative of this, I'd say, well, the derivative of b to the y is b to the y ln b, oops, didn't look like an n, ln b dy dx equals, and the derivative of x is 1. So that means dy dx is going to be equal to 1 divided by b to the y ln b. But what's b to the y? b to the y is x. So that's 1 over x ln b. It's a really nice proof, isn't it? 1 over x ln b. So you should say that to yourself a few times. 1 over x ln b. Okay, so let's look at some practice examples so we can get this straightened out. So if we have log base 2, x squared plus 1. So f prime x, don't forget to write that out first. So it's 1 over x, so 1 over this, ln 2. So I'm going to write 1 over x squared plus 1 in brackets, ln 2. And because this is a function, I need to take the derivative of this as well. So the derivative of x squared plus 1 is going to be 2x, and there's my answer. So I have 2x over x squared plus 1. And again, I remind you, don't forget to put the brackets on that. It would be like 1 times ln 2, which wouldn't be correct. Okay, let's go on, do some more. g prime x. So I have x log base 10x. So I have the product rule to deal with here. So I'm going to do the first times the derivative of log base 10x. So I know that's going to be 1 over x ln 10. And that's the first part of it. So that's the first times the derivative of the second plus the second. That's log base 10x times the derivative of x, which is 1. So I have x in the numerator and denominator here, so I can divide those out. So I have 1 over ln 10 plus log base 10x. And there you go. Okay, what if we have an exponent? Well, because this is a logarithmic function, you should initially write this out as 4 times log base 10. That's using your laws of exponents if you need to go back and take a look at one of those lessons. So no, I'm not decreasing this by 1. This is not taking the derivative. It's simply rewriting it in a format that makes the calculation much easier. So if I take the derivative of this now, so I'll say, well, f prime x is going to be equal to 4. That's out front, so the constant times the derivative of the function now. So the derivative of log base 10 of 3x plus 1 is going to be 1 over this, in brackets, times the ln of the base here, which is 10, and then times the derivative of the function here, so that would be times 3. And that's going to give me 4 times 1 times 3 is 12 over 3x plus 1 times the ln of 10. Okay, and the last easier one here, number 4, we have f of x equals log base 5 of 3x minus 8. So f prime x is going to be equal to 1 over 3x minus 8, leave it in brackets, times the ln of the base, which is 5, times the derivative of the function, which is 3. So you should have this figured out by now. This is pretty. Once you get the patterning going, 1 over x ln a or 1 over x ln b, 
I'm pretty sure in a previous life I used to say one over X lawn A, and I like the way it sounded. It was easy to remember. One over X lawn B, one over X lawn B. So say that five or six times and you'll have it nailed. Okay, let's go on to some where you have to find the equation of the tangent line. So find the equation of the tangent to y equals log base 10 x at the point 102. So you know if I put in 100 here, 10 raised to what power gives me 100? The answer is 2. So yes, that point is on my graph. So to find the equation of a tangent, recall that you need to find the slope function at this point. So the slope function is just the derivative. So y prime equals 1 over x ln 10, right? 1 over x, the ln of the base. So I want to know what y prime is when x is equal to 100. So that's going to be 1 over 100 ln 10. So that would be my slope. So I'm going to go way over here and I'm going to say, okay, well, x is equal to 100 and y is equal to 2 and the slope is equal to 1 over 100 ln 10. Now find the equation. It's always a good idea to write these out before you start. So I'm going to use the y equals mx plus b equation of a line and I'm going to plug in what I know here. So y is 2. The slope is 1 over 100 ln 10 times x, which is 100, plus b. Remember, my job here is, is to solve for b, so that's what I want to do. So now when I simplify this, I'm just going to have 2 equals 1 over ln 10, because these hundreds will cancel out, right? So I get 2 minus 1 over ln 10 is equal to b. Okay, so now I'm going to plug that back into the formula. So I'm going to say, therefore, y is equal to m. That's this one here. So I put that back in. 1 over 100 ln 10 mx plus b. So plus 2 minus 1 over ln 10. Okay, so if you want to make this really pretty, you should now multiply by 100 over ln 10 to get rid of the denominator here. So I'm going to multiply, let me get my little colored pen here. So I'm going to multiply this by 100 ln 10, this by 100 ln 10, this by 100 ln 10, and the same thing here. Right, I multiply each of them up. So that's going to give me 100 ln 10 y. Is equal to, so 100 ln 10, 100 ln 10. So that's going to give me x plus 200 ln 10 minus, so ln 10 into ln 10 minus 100. And then I would probably take out a factor here from these two because this is this is my constant at the end, right? So I would have um, writing it in in um, standard form for my line. So I'd say x minus 100 ln 10 y. And then I'm going to pull out 100 here. So plus 100 times 2 ln 10 minus 1 equals 0. So that would be standard form of your line. Okay, the second one uses the natural log. So natural ln here. Find the equation of the tangent to y equals x squared ln x at 1, 0. Okay, so let's write out the equation again before we start because we're going to look at this. This is a product, so we need to do the product rule while we use our law, our derivative of the natural law, which is 1 over x, right? So I'm going to do the first times the derivative of the second. So this is just 1 over x 
plus the second ln x times the derivative of the first, that's going to give me 2x ln x. Okay, so I want to know what, this is my slope function, and I want to know what is the slope when x equals 1. So y prime, when x equals 1, is going to be, well, this is just x, really, right? x squared divided by x is x, and when x is 1, that gives me 1. And 2 times 1 is 2, so I have 2 ln 1. And what is the ln of 1? So the question is, ln 1, what is this equal to? So e to what power gives me 1? So the answer is 0. So this whole thing is 0. So I just get 1. Because remember, ln, ln of 1 equals 0 because e to the power of 0 equals 1. Remember, this is a little base e. Okay, so I get the slope is 1. Well, that was pretty easy. So now I'm going to go back over to y equals mx plus b. And I have x is equal to 1, y is equal to 0, and the slope is also equal to 1. So plug that in here, I get 0 equals, I'm going to plug everything in here just so you see what I'm doing, 1 plus 1. So that means b is equal to minus 1. So you would say y is equal to m is 1, x minus 1. Or in standard form, that would be x minus y minus 1 equals 0. Okay, so that wasn't too hard, was it? Now we're going to do one that's probably the most difficult question for you. And that's using... Um, finding the maximum values and points of inflection. So kind of like curve sketching work here, right? What is the max? What is the min? So recall that in order to find max and minimums, I'm going to take the first derivative. I'm going to set it equal to zero, and I'm going to solve for x. So don't get too upset when you have x's and lawns because it, it just looks worse than it is, right? So what's f prime x here? So I'm going to do the first, x, times the derivative of the second. So the derivative of ln x squared is going to be, we're going to say 2 ln x times 1 over x plus the ln of x squared. So let's put this in brackets like here. So this is the first times the derivative of the second. So I did 2 ln x, derivative of ln x is 1 over x, plus the second, which is um, ln x squared times the derivative of the first, and the derivative of the first is, so we'll just write this like this. We should leave it the same format. Okay, so that's going to give me 2x ln x. So this x is going to cancel with this one. So I'm going to get 2 ln x here plus the ln of x squared. And I can factor out a ln x, which is a good idea because it'll make finding the derivative easier when we set it to 0. So I pull out a ln x and I'm going to have 2 plus ln x. Okay, so there's my first part. Now I need to figure out... Um, what values make this zero? Maybe I'll just continue it right under here. So I want for critical values, set f prime x equal to zero. So you might not have done this part for a long time, right? Sketching functions. Okay, so what makes ln x equal to zero? So the answer to this one, this says, e to the 0 is equal to x, or x is equal to e to the 0, so x equals 1 is one possibility. The other one is what makes this bracket equal to 0, 2 plus ln x. So ln x equals minus 2. Okay, so I have two possibilities. So what is x here, though? We need to solve for x. I'm not just going to leave it like this. So I have e to the negative 2 is equal to x. So x equals e to the negative 2. Remember, because these are like logs with base e, so e to the negative 2 equals x. 
and this is e to the power of 0 equals x e to the power of 0 is 1. So I have these two um, possible values here for max and mins, and I'm going to figure out whether or not um, these are max or mins, and I'm going to use a first derivative test. So remember, first derivative test, I make like a little number line here, I label it f prime x, and I have e to the negative 2, and so I'm going to write on e to the negative 2. It's a good idea when you're working with these to figure out approximately what e to the minus 2 is so that you can find points to the left and the right. So e to the minus 2 is approximately 0 0.1353. And I have 1. So what you want to do now is you're going to plug in the values um, to the right. So let's say I plugged in 2, and I'm plugging that into the derivative. See, this is a first derivative test. So if I plug in 2 up here, I'd have ln 2 times 2 plus ln 2. And that happens to be positive. You can tell just by looking at it. So we have positive slope on this side. And in between here, I would pick a number um, like maybe 0.5 and plug it in here. So I'm not going to do those calculations, but I have done them previously to set this up for you. If you put in 0.5 here, you're going to get a negative value. And if you pick, pick something less than 0.13, let's say you just even put in 0.1, and you will get that that's positive. So that shows that there's going to be a local max here, max, and this is going to be a minimum. So therefore, we say we have a maximum value, maximum of e to the minus 2, and I need to find the y-coordinate, and the minimum value is going to be 1 and whatever this value is. Now remember, when you find the coordinates, you go back to the original function, Right? You don't plug it into the derivative or you're just going to get a 0. So if I put in 1, let's do that one first, 1 times the ln of 1, so that's 0, and this is all 0. So 1, 0 is my minimum value. And if you plug in e to the minus 2, e to the minus 2, so let's do that one. I'm going to write it out here for you. So f at e to the minus 2 equals e to the minus 2 times the ln of e to the minus 2 squared. So you know the answer to this. What do I raise e to to get e to the minus 2? This answer is minus 2, right? This equals minus 2. And I'm going to square it, so that's going to give me 4, and that's going to be 4e to the minus 2. Okay, so that's going to be my maximum value, e to the minus 2 and 4e to the minus 2 coordinates and the coordinates for the minimum value. So for the second part, it asks you what are the points of inflection. So that means I need to take a second derivative. So I'm going to write the first derivative out here again first. So we had ln x 2 plus ln x and I'm going to take the derivative. So f double prime x is going to be, so it's going to be the first, so that's ln x times the derivative of this, remember we're doing product rule here, um, the derivative of this is going to be that 0, and ln x is 1 over x, plus the second, so that's 2 plus ln x in brackets times the derivative of the first, so derivative of ln x is 1 over x. Okay, so let's simplify this a little bit. We'll just write it out nice and neatly here. So we have 2 over x, and we have plus ln x over x, because these were all multiplied, right? So for critical values, we're going to set, set, or actually not critical values here. Well, it is still a critical value, but it's a point of inflection. Remember, we use second derivative to find points of inflection. So we're going to set f double prime x equal to 0. So if I set that equal to 0, then it doesn't matter what's in the denominator, right? So I want to know that ln x plus 
2 plus ln x is equal to 0. So that gives me um, 2 plus 2 ln x, right? 2 plus 2 ln x is equal to 0. And that means that I want to um, I want to solve for this, so I'm going to divide by 2. So I have 1 plus ln x equals 0. So ln x is equal to minus 1. Okay, so now that I have my second derivative, um, I need to know what is x equal to here. So this is log base e. So x is equal to e to the minus 1. Right? E, don't leave it like this. I mean, it, it kind of looks like you're done, but you want to solve for x. So x is e to the minus 1. Now I have to prove, or you could say 1 over e. Right? So I need to prove that this is a point of inflection. Remember, all these proofs are necessary. So I'm going to make a number line again, but I'm going to call it f double prime x. So I'm checking the second derivative to see if there is a change in concavity on either side here. So 1 over e happens to be about approximately 0 0.37. So if you plugged in, say, 1 here into the second derivative, so that's all the way up here. So if you plugged in 1, you'd have, um, this is just 1, so you'd have ln x plus 2 plus, and this is 1, so ln 1. And that's going to give you a positive number, so it's going to be concave up. And plugging in some value on the other side, <clears throat> you can do this all directly right into your calculator, and you're going to get a negative value, showing that there is a change of concavity, <coughs> excuse me, when x is equal to 1 over e. Now remember again that that's not the end of it, because you need the coordinates of the point of inflection. So, so when x is equal to 1 over e, f at 1 over e is equal to, plug it in, 1 over e times the ln of 1 over e squared. So remember, this is like, I probably should have written it as um, e to the negative 1. You'll probably see that much quicker. So what do I raise e to to get e to the negative 1, you're going to say negative 1. I negative 1, I squared it, that gives me 1. And 1 times 1 over e is 1 over e. So therefore, 1 over e, 1 over e is the point of inflection. And there you go. So that was kind of long, but it's um, something that you should probably know how to do. So I hope you're enjoying these little videos. If you like them, give me a thumbs up. This is beyond the beyond the pale, beyond the grade 12 math, math curriculum in Ontario, but definitely something many of you will be needing to know in first year university. Thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe.